The following may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Minutes before curfew on June 7, the day Khadija Fleming went missing, her mother Anastasia spoke to her on the phone. Or did she? All she told me was she was in town liming, Anastasia told Guardian Media yesterday as she stood under a shed in Palmyra Village, San Fernando, searching for her child. Showing the WhatsApp call record, the grieving mother said the call ended abruptly after five seconds. She then got a message from her daughter's phone saying that she was fed up with her boyfriend and was in Port of Spain liming with a friend. When Anastasia asked what happened, Khadija responded, Look, me I want to hurt me head. Khadija said she would call in a while, but never did. Now Anastasia is wondering who she spoke with on June 7, saying the call ended so quickly and her daughter had not been to Port of Spain in a long time. She questioned where Khadija would be liming during curfew hours. Investigators also confirmed that in tracking Khadija's phone, the last ping they got was from a cell tower near Olera Heights, San Fernando. It is now 10 days since Khadija, 24, left her home at Lothian's Road, Princess Town, to visit her daughter who stayed with a friend in Olera Heights. Anastasia said due to personal issues, Khadija allowed her daughter to stay with a friend over the past two years. Khadija would visit her daughter and take her out, but the friend began restricting family members. Eventually, Khadija wanted her daughter back. Her brother Jamal said there was a case before the court, but Khadija did not show up at the hearing last month. As relatives searched the old cane fields of St. Madeline and the farmlands of Taruba yesterday, Anastasia was still unsure about her daughter's fate without a body. Khadija's boyfriend, Raymond Frederick, was searching feverishly along Daisy Road, St. Madeline. Frederick said on June 7th, Khadija told him that she missed her daughter and wanted to see her. He said he gave her money to travel to see her daughter. He said that as 9 p.m. drew closer, he called Khadija's phone, but she did not answer. Anastasia said that based on the information she gathered, it appeared someone had poisoned Khadija's food. She said that based on another report, someone also tied up her daughter. While there are rumors that Khadija was erased and stuffed in a barrel, Anastasia said Olera Heights residents saw someone moving a barrel on the night her daughter disappeared. They saw a barrel moving. They heard a quarrel up in the buildings. They said after that they did not hear anything else. The place got quiet. Investigators said they have someone in custody assisting them with their investigations. Human remains found could be that of missing mom Khadija Flamen. The police discovered burnt human skeletal remains on an abandoned cane field road in Gasparillo on Thursday. Following leads into the disappearance of missing mom Khadija Flamen. The remains were spotted by officers of the Air Support Unit conducting surveillance using drones at Coroni Agricultural Land at Reform Road. Police said the skeletal remains were found in an area where garbage is dumped and burnt almost half a kilometer along the dirt road. Khadija, 24, last spoke with her mother on June 7th, and since then calls and texts to her cell phone have not been returned. Her aunt, Anita Flamen, reported her missing to the police. Officers later tracked her cell phone via a cell tower to an area near Olera Heights, Circular Road, San Fernando. Khadija's family suspects she met her demise in an apartment of a building complex and her body was carried down several floors and placed in a vehicle and disposed of. Police have detained a COVID-positive nurse who was in self-quarantine at home. The woman, 
who is a close friend of Khadija and also the guardian of her eight-year-old daughter, is suspected to be involved in her demise. Search parties comprised of the police, family, friends and volunteers have been combing areas on the outskirts of San Fernando since Sunday. Searching in abandoned cane fields and tracks at M1 and M2 Ring Roads, Reform Village, Tarradale, Palmyra, and Daisy Road, St. Madeline. Anastasia Flamen has been fully involved in the search for her beloved daughter, along with other family members, friends, and volunteers. Relatives have also had nightly virtual prayer services, along with candlelight vigils, hoping for a breakthrough in the case. The remains were removed to a funeral home after being viewed by a district medical officer. A post-mortem will be conducted at the Forensic Science Center in St. James on Friday to determine the cause of death. Inspector Ramblard of the Air Support Unit, PC Mahiper, Inspector Mirage, Sergeant Forbes, Superintendent Sean Dilpole, PC Ramnasar, PC Ramnarin, and PC Julem Singh were at the crime scene. Later on, he'll call me as lover, make me dinner. Straight from my mother's house, I went into his. Blended by the fact that it would turn out like this, I dreaded walking down that hall of shame, so I kept my mouth shut and remained with him. Every day, I put an X on the calendar. Eager for my death to end this, I do contract us. If I pack, he go break my back. I don't want it to end like that. If I leave, he go win my back. This relationship is a boogie trap. Looks really deceiving. I can't believe that I fell for that Eden. The song that he breathed just makes my blood cringe. I wish, I wish it wasn't like this. But I've made my bed and I have to lie in it. I have to cry in it. And maybe one day, I'd have to die in it. Because I chose his good looks, not seeing the lie in it. Just like the wheels of the bus would go round and round, the cycle of abuse would go on and on. If you refuse to open your eyes, remain blinded by lies, spreading ties and allowing yourself to become stigmatized. Silence didn't save me. Now I face a life sentence with the devil who wears Gucci. She's a nurse in San Fernando. I'm not too sure exactly what building she's living in, but I know she's living in only rights. Can she mad you? She kill a woman, cut she up and put she in a barrel in the apartment and have the woman child, seven years, living with she. I'm telling people she had a child. Sick, sick, sick. I know how police get the mark, but they come for she, I think yesterday, either yesterday, yesterday or Friday. Real mad people thing. And then she's saying, oh, I hear any police vehicle, she, she say, oh, Jesus, make sure do it. Mad. What's your verdict? Do you believe there's reason for an insanity defense? Or do you believe that based on the alleged premeditation of the crime, her behavior is just an act?